A compressor is one of the most powerful tools you have in your toolbox to control the dynamic range of any track that you've recorded. Now, let's take a snare drum, for example. A snare drum can be played very, very lightly, and when the drummer plays it that way, it's very, very hard to hear. But then if he winds up and really hits that snare drum, it gets very, very loud. So musical instruments can have an extremely wide dynamic range, which is great for musical expression, but sometimes that dynamic range is just far too wide. And instead of adjusting the volume faders up and down whenever you hear something getting too loud or too soft, it's much easier to use a compressor because a compressor narrows that dynamic range of any of the tracks or channels that you have in your Cubase project. So what I'm going to do to show you a compressor is scroll down here to my lead vocal track, and I'm going to solo this lead vocal right now, and I'm also going to need to turn up the master fader because these vocal tracks are just so dynamic that they can get very, very soft and very, very loud. So let's take a listen to this lead vocal track. I say yes and you say no, why can't we agree? You say stop and I say go, we're living at the yellow in between, I lift you. You can hear that some of those volumes are nice and loud, and then other ones you start to lose the vocals a little bit because the vocals are so widely dynamic that they just get a little too loud sometimes and aren't loud enough other times. So this is a perfect opportunity to use a compressor. And one of the easiest to use is the compressor that's found inside of the channel strip. Now let's take a look at the rack up here. You'll notice that I have the strip or the channel strip enabled right here. And in the channel strip we have a gate and we have a compressor and we have the EQ position, which is the main EQ, a transient envelope, and then also saturation and limiting. So what I'm going to do is come to the compressor and go to the, just off to the right of that compressor setting and then click that little carrot and now I can choose from one of the three built-in compressors. There's a standard compressor, a tube compressor, and a vintage compressor. And I'm going to choose the tube compressor. It's a very, very simple compressor to use. It has an input control and an output control and by setting those controls you're going to be able to tame the dynamic range of the vocals. So let's modify those settings to tame the dynamic range of this vocal track. I say black and you say white. We never find the You see, if I turn up the input of the compressor, it compresses more. And you get this little meter that shows us the gain reduction. This is how much level is being removed from the signal of that track. And that helps to even out or glue together all of those dynamic ranges. So now let's take a listen. Was like today tomorrow will be just like every other day we're at an impasse see now things are much smoother if i turn off the compressor by hitting the bypass button right here I say yes, then we can listen to the before and after why can't we this is before you say stop and i say go we're living at the yellow in between i lift you up you bring me down the outcome leaves us stranded on the ground yesterday was like today why does it always seem to work out this way we're at an impasse so the tube compressor is really doing a smoothing of the dynamic range of that particular track now I want to describe to you a little bit more about what a compressor does. So right now I'm going to turn off this channel strip compressor and use a compressor in the inserts instead. So I'm going to discard the settings for that particular compressor and then I'm going to open a window that will contain all of the settings on that particular track. And you do that by hitting the edit channel settings button. And what you're going to do is see a much bigger window of all of the settings that you find in the racks. So you'll notice that if we come over here, we see many of the same settings as we saw in the racks, except that we see bigger versions of them. There are the eight inserts, there's the strip and the associated channel strip settings right here, then there's also the equalizer, and then there are send effects, and all of these I'll go into a little bit later on. But right now I want to show you a more basic compressor so that you can see what a compressor does. So I'm going to come over to the inserts, and I'm going to insert a standard compressor on this insert slot. 
So I'm going to go to the dynamic settings, and then I'm going to call up just the plain old compressor. Now this compressor doesn't have an input and an output control. Instead, we're looking at some of the traditional controls that you'll find on a compressor, including threshold, ratio, and makeup gain. These are the most important controls to understand on a compressor. So let's talk about the threshold. The threshold is the volume level at which the compressor will engage. So if a track never hits minus 20 dB below zero, the compressor will never work, even if it's in the signal path and it's powered up. If the volume doesn't get to at least minus 20 dB, it's not going to engage. So you'll need to set the threshold at the volume level at which you want the compressor to start working. And then how hard does the compressor work? Well, that's left up to the ratio. The ratio is how many decibels above the threshold will it take to add one decibel of volume. For example, if I were to set this ratio at about 4 to 1, that means that the signal coming into the compressor will have to exceed the threshold by 4 dB to actually have the compressor add only 1 dB of actual volume. And since a compressor is actually removing volume from the track or reducing the gain of the signal, then you do have to employ the makeup gain control so that it puts back in the volume that you've taken away, except that it will be smoothed out by the action of the compressor. So there's an auto setting for this particular makeup gain control, and I'm going to leave that enabled right now. And then let's play some audio in this compressor so that we can see how to adjust the settings. I say black and you say white. We you can see that the volume the input right now is exceeding minus 20 right. dB. This little dot on this graph is the same as the threshold control over here. So anytime the track's volume gets over minus 20 dB below zero, it's going to start the compressor working. And you can see that this gain reduction, this kind of backwards meter right here, is showing us how much gain is being reduced from the output of the compressor. That's what's controlling the volume or the dynamic range of this particular track. And then the output level over here is tied to the makeup gain. And since we have the auto setting on right now, that output gain is being adjusted for us automatically. I say yes and you say no. Why can't we agree? If we wanted the compressor to work at even a lower volume level, we would decrease the threshold, either by adjusting the threshold control here or by adjusting this little dot in the graph. The outcome leaves us stranded on the ground. But now that track is starting to sound overly compressed. It's starting to breathe a little bit, where the volume gets a bit dodgy. So that pumping and breathing is usually something that you would reserve for an effect. Instead, you just want to smooth out the volume levels of the track. So I'm going to bring that control up to about minus 22 dB below zero. You say left and I say right. Now let's listen to it before and after. This is after. Raise you up. You drag me down. I'm beaten up and knocked down to the ground. Yesterday was like today. Tomorrow will be just like every other day. We're at an impasse. So you'll notice that that dynamic range has been smoothed out. It's not like a night and day difference. But when you use a compressor, it's going to glue all of those loud and soft dynamic ranges together a bit and make all of the sound on the track more easily heard by the listener. So that's how you can use a compressor to control the dynamic range of any mix console channel or track in your Cubase project.